Hello and welcome back to Ovesen.net. Uh, in this video I'm gonna do some restoration work on this machine here. It is a Commodore Amiga 600. If you saw uh, one of my unboxing videos uh, a while back, uh, you saw that uh, this was one of the machines I got from uh, my friend uh, Kjell Ove. And in this video it's uh, time to do some uh, restoration and uh, see if it's uh, working 100%. I already powered it on bef once before and uh, I know that it is uh, producing a picture at least. The machine looks to be in uh, very good condition, uh, no damages. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's been opened before. You see that this warranty seal is broken. Uh, it's uh, a little bit yellowed, perhaps. Not really sure what the uh, color should be exactly. As usual, it's a little bit dirty and uh, it needs a good cleaning. The machine has an expansion door, so ta let's take a look and see if. Uh, there's anything inside? Nope, there's not. I'm uh, hooking it up to my television and uh, yeah. I'm using this uh, video cable from Amiga Kit that uh, has um, RGB to uh, SCART. So uh, this is very handy. You can use it uh, on any modern TV or at least uh, that has a SCART input. So whereas the Amiga 500 uh, didn't have an uh, RF modulator, uh, this one actually do have one. And, uh, yeah, but I'm not using that uh, now. So let's uh, turn it on and uh, see if it actually boots up. All right, there is a disc inside and it's uh, starting to load. All right, the sound is working. So this is the intro for the game North and South. This machine runs uh, the 2.0 version of the ROMs. And that's of course a more modern version than the 1.3 from the Amiga 500 era. I'm gonna check if it can load the, the workbench 1.3, which I have. All right, yeah, seems to work just fine. And the old uh, mouse for the Amiga 500 is also working, so um, no problems there. So that was a little demo of the speech synthesizers inside the Amiga workbench. All right, that was the initial testing and the uh, machine seems to work just fine and uh, I like to run some games on this one, but first we have to do the regular routine, which is uh, cleaning and uh, recapping. Opening this machine should be straightforward. There are two screws here and then three in the front and uh, there should be one there, but seems to be missing. Maybe there's something under here also, I don't know. So there is uh, the ribbon cable for the keyboard. And power. So I guess this is the kind you just pull right out gently. 
yeah. Okay, so uh, there seemed to be a little bit of dust, but uh, hey, that's normal. <laughs> At first glance, it looks to be in uh, pretty good shape. I cannot see anything obvious right away. Uh, the problem with these machines are these uh, capacitors here that are uh, prone to start leaking and uh, many of these machines have been damaged because of that. That's why I have this uh, capacitor kit for uh, the Amiga 600 and it's uh, all the necessary capacitors. However, before I do anything uh, soldering work and uh, recapping, I'm going to clean everything as good as possible. So I'm just going to remove the floppy drive first. area seems to be around here there's a lot of dust and there is actually a little bit of corrosion on the cover of the RF modulator I'm gonna remove the whole board away from the bottom case so that I can clean the case and that's just one screw holding uh, the board to the case but then we need to um, wiggle it out All right, then the keyboard comes loose and it's only held in place by these plastic tabs, no screws. Finally, I'm gonna remove this small uh, LED cord. I don't want to get any water to the electronics. Then it's time for a little soapy hot water bath. And I leave it there for around half an hour maybe. And the soap I'm using is uh, only regular dish washing soap. That was a good bath. They look nice and shiny, clean. That was my air compressor charging up. And uh, now I'm in the garage and I'm gonna blow this uh, motherboard uh, free of any dust. That was the dust taken care of and uh, besides that the board looks to be uh, very clean and I'm just gonna spray a little bit of uh, isopropanol over it and uh, yeah go over it with some uh, uh, cotton pad uh, what you call it q-tips Even though the PCB looks uh, clean, uh, you can see there is a bit of dirt on it anyway because uh, of uh, pollution in the air and everything like that through the years. How important is it actually to clean it like this? I don't really know, but I think it's a good idea. I like uh, sitting and fiddling and cleaning. So, yeah. All right, shiny. Before I continue, I have to remove this uh, metal shield on the back and um, to do that, you have to uh, take out these uh, nuts here. Then bend uh, back uh, the tabs that uh, pokes out like this. Let's see if I can get it loose. Of course, there was one more here. That's it. Backside of the PCB looks uh, in great shape. Can't see anything wrong. Finally, with the regards to the cleaning of this board, I'm gonna spray some electronic cleaner into uh, all the contacts. And uh, actually I see some uh, some dirt inside here. I didn't blow uh, there. Oh, it's just a little dust.
Then it's time to uh, take a look at the keyboard and this one looks to be quite uh, dirty inside, a lot of shit, so uh, yeah, wow. Also the ribbon cable full of dust. So cleaning a keyboard like this involves uh, removing all the keycaps uh, from the actual, actual keyboard and then cleaning uh, underneath and also clean every individual um, keycap and to remove uh, keycaps I always use this uh, keycap puller and it's very handy tool because if you try to use a screwdriver like this flat iron or something you can easily break the the little key posts that uh, the keycaps are sitting on so I just place the puller between the keys like this and just pull right straight up and uh, there's always a little spring under each of uh, the keycaps so yeah so here we go The space bar is a little bit uh, different. It has this uh, long uh, metal uh, rod and it also has three smaller springs than the other. No, it has two smaller springs and one is the same. So um, be careful when you lift this up that you don't uh, rip out this metal bar. Wow, look at all this shit. Underneath the dust, uh, the keyboard uh, looks okay. There is a few spots here with some dirt. I'm just gonna use some isopropanol as usual. I'm not gonna bother with uh, removing the back plate because um, it's probably not worth the extra work because uh, I think uh, it wasn't that dirty. If it's been an older machine and more uh, dirty, I would do it, but uh, for now I'm not doing that. Final piece uh, cleaning wise is uh, the floppy drive and it uh, is a bit uh, dusty, so it needs a uh, good cleaning and uh, to do that uh, you have to open the cover and uh, blow it clean and then clean as much as I can. Then I will uh, clean the drive head and uh, also lubricate the drive rails. Oh, very dusty inside. Let me try to open this one. There's always a new mechanism and uh, this probably is just uh, some tabs that has to be lifted. Yeah. All right, that's it. All right, dust inside. I'm just gonna use a little bit of uh, air duster. Not too high pressure on this uh, delicate hardware. All right, then it's just a little bit boring uh, job to clean everything uh, as much as I can with uh, alcohol and uh, cotton swabs. Down here is the drive rail and this is what's uh, moving the, uh, the read and write head uh, forward and backwards and uh, I think it's important to really clean good uh, down into this area and uh, just try to move the, the head uh, forward so that you 
make sure that you clean everything. So as you can see, there's a lot of uh, shit down there. So this rail is uh, is uh, turned by the stepper motor, and uh, there's also another rail inside uh, down here, which uh, which uh, the drive head is um, is sliding on, and also make sure you clean that and try to slide the head as far as forward as you can and backwards again. Finally, I'm cleaning uh, the head themselves. Uh, there's one below and one up and uh, I use a clean uh, cotton swab with some alcohol and just uh, rub it a bit, not too hard and then turning it around a bit and also the upper head. Finally, I use a little bit of uh, silicone uh, grease and uh, just a little amount onto uh, a cotton swab and then I just put a little bit onto here because this is uh, moving by the head friction and also the drive uh, motor and uh, the drive rail below here. There is actually a little bit of uh, rust. Um, I'm just going to scrape it off and then just use a tiny amount of uh, of uh, vinegar to uh, neutralize it. That was the keyboard, uh, shiny and good as new. Uh, however, it is a bit uh, yellowed if I compare uh, the color on top of the keycaps with the, with the sides uh, there's definitely definitely some yellowing but uh, I'm not I'm just gonna leave this outside in the Sun for uh, some hours and then I think it will improve now I'm ready to uh, start the recapping process and I made a little uh, drawing here so uh, I know where w which caps is where and also I'm gonna take uh, detailed photos of the board so I'm pretty sure which values goes where. This is going to be exciting because I uh, haven't done much uh, recapping uh, of these uh, SMD surface mount uh, capacitors so uh, yeah I'm just trying to figure out w which method I'm going to use. I have seen at least three methods to r for removing uh, these caps. The one, one is uh, using a uh, heat gun, uh, hot air, and uh, the other one is using just um, uh, soldering iron. And uh, the third one is actually just uh, twisting them off, which I uh, have heard is not recommended because you can uh, easily rip off uh, the pads underneath. And if you use uh, hot air, you might uh, risk exploding uh, the cap. <laughs> if it gets overheated, the uh, gas will build up inside and then it might explode in your face. So let's start uh, the desoldering and I have uh, heated up my uh, desoldering station. I'm gonna use the desoldering station to um, desolder these uh, regular true hole capacitors um, from the back side. The true hole ones are the easiest, so uh, we go with those first. So let me see if uh, I can get th them loose. Uh, I think this is fairly loose. Wiggle a little bit gently. That was the four uh, true hole electrolytes. Probably just fine, but uh, 
you never know these can dry out or they can start leak so uh, it's best to uh, to replace them if you can Then over to these surface mounted cans, uh, these are the ones that are very prone to uh, leaking and uh, should be replaced on uh, old Amigas. Uh, and the method I'm going to use is to use my soldering iron to melt uh, each side and then gently lift, uh, lift it up so that I don't risk uh, ri ripping off any uh, solder pads. I just apply some heat to the pad and then try to tilt it up a bit and then I go to the other side and now I have to turn uh, uh, I have to turn the PCB around it's a bit hard when it's in between uh, two components like this so Okay, it's lifted, then I go back to the other side again, all right. So, even if I try to be careful, you see, unfortunately, I lifted uh, one of the pads and that has to be repaired, of course. So that's a bummer. I try to be uh, even more careful with the rest, I don't want to rip off any more pads please two more caps to go and these are difficult because uh, it's very uh, narrow in to reach in between here and uh, have to switch to a smaller uh, tip of the iron so uh, let's see if that helps there I think hopefully that was all the caps uh, gone and now I'm gonna clean up uh, all the pads What's not so great is uh, that I actually managed to rip off two pads and uh, yeah, I think I'll manage to repair those. Uh, this is uh, of course uh, one of the risks by trying to desolder these uh, SMD components uh, the way I did. And I actually have the two pads uh, here and uh, yeah, I think I'll have to find some way to, to glue them onto the the PCB with some epoxy or something and then try to to bridge uh, the connection to the trace to fix the ripped off uh, solder pads I um, already glued on one of them there and now I'm gonna glue on this one so I have a epoxy resin glue and I just put a tiny amount uh, uh, onto the board where the pad was okay there All right, I think that's okay. 
this one is already stuck now I'm gonna leave this to cure uh, for a while and then I try to uh, to reconnect the pad with the trace so I'm ready to try and fix, uh, fix the connection between the pads I glued and the traces and uh, I had some flux there already but uh, I'm trying to heat up this uh, little trace here and put a little solder on it and then connect it to the pad All right, I have glued the pad uh, back on now. All right, I struggled a bit, but I finally uh, managed to uh, make a connection between the two uh, uh, capacitors. And uh, yeah, however, when I'm soldering on the capacitors, uh, this might get loose again. So I have to be very careful. It's time to start uh, soldering on the capacitors and I uh, Start by adding a little solder onto the pads. I did start uh, soldering in some of the capacitors, uh, however this is uh, not very easy, it's very tight. Maybe I should have desoldered this uh, keyboard connector, but uh, yeah, I'll try to see if I can make it work. I think I managed to get a good solder on these two. Uh, they seem to be uh, sitting firmly on both sides. Those were the worst ones. These two where I repaired the uh, broken traces and uh, lifted the pads, uh, I managed to solder those on and uh, the connection between them are good. So I think that is uh, a good repair. I managed to get uh, these two in place, maybe not the best uh, straight soldering, but uh, I think they're okay and uh, was hard to get in between. Uh, now I'm continuing with the three here. These are uh, 100 uh, microfarad and uh, yeah, there's a little more room here and uh, should be easier to uh, solder. I just hold it down with uh, my finger. Same with the other side. A little bit of solder on the tip and then I try to get between. Oops, hot. Yeah looks nice okay that was all the surface mount capacitors and i think it went well uh, not the best work i've done i'm pretty sure it's quite different to solder uh, smd components and i should have rehearsed on some uh, other board before i took on this task but uh, hopefully it will work then i can solder in uh, the remaining three uh, true hole capacitors That was the soldering uh, completed. Uh, hopefully I didn't wreck this board. I am a little bit frustrated. It was uh, more difficult than I anticipated, um, but uh, this is learning by doing. Okay, it's time to test. Did I wreck this board or did it survive? Turning on. All right, uh, so far so good. <laughs> so I'm inserting this uh, game again. Let's test. And there is a stereo sound also. So uh, yeah, this seems to be okay. 
Time to assemble the machine and uh, do a little more thorough test. Just do everything uh, the same but in reverse order. <laughs> Before I uh, close the machine completely, I have ad actually added uh, one of my GoTech drives just to, to run um, diagnostics uh, software. A GoTech is actually a virtual uh, floppy drive that can be used to, for many types of machines, including the Amiga. And this one runs uh, flash floppy uh, firmware and uh, you can put the disk images onto a USB memory stick. After pressing uh, F7, uh, the machine booted into the selected image and this is the Amiga test kit version 1.5. So now I'm gonna run uh, different tests. Test all memory. Memory seems to be just fine. It has run uh, six rounds and uh, no problems. Then uh, mouse, joystick, gamepad. I have attached the mouse. Uh, just one port is in use, but uh, seems to be fine. Audio. Video test. Yeah, looks fine to me. <laughs> then the CIA chipset and battery clock. All tests passed. And the battery backup clock uh, is of course not uh, detected because there is none. Keyboard test. Uh, keyboard is working pretty good. So I'm just gonna run through most of the keys and this machine of course doesn't have a keypad so uh, I mean a numeric keypad so uh, can't test that now let's try a familiar game this one uh, was very popular when I had an Amiga 500 and uh, yeah I used to play it a lot So let's do a little riding. Pinball Dreams and this game seems to be cracked by some group Anthrax Alright, this machine is uh, fully restored and uh, assembled and uh, 
everything seems to work uh, 100% so uh, pretty pleased with that and uh, after some hours in the sun you see uh, the keyboard and uh, everything is uh, in perfect color no more yellowing the machine was uh, actually uh, fully working but uh, it's always uh, good to have the capacitors replaced on these machines before they start leaking Anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, maybe I see you in my next video. Bye bye.